You're watching Reality Check as the war worsens in Ukraine. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky has stepped up his demand that Western nations should enforce a no-fly zone. Tonight, we decode why this is an unrealistic, perhaps even catastrophic demand. To be clear, the Russian invasion has got bloodier in the past 48 hours. Explosions reported in key cities of Kiev and Kharkiv in the east. A TV tower blown up in Kiev in which Five are reported to be killed. Reports of Russian troops parrot dropping into Kharkiv, which has come under heavy shelling. A massive Russian military convoy inches ever closer to Kiev. All of these terrifying images and this escalation of violence is one of the reasons why Ukraine's president, in his latest appeal, said he cannot fight Russia alone. Говорили багато разів з президентом Байденом. Я вдячний йому за ці і можливості, і допомогу. Вони також мене не чули. Я їм говорив, що Україна буде боротися, ви побачите, міцніше за всіх. Але одні ми на самоті з Росією ми просто не зможемо. Ми про діалог. Я вважаю, так, треба припинити хоча б бомбардування людей. Просто бомбардування припинити і після цього сісти за стіл перемоги. Cannot fly Russia alone, he says. Essentially, a no-fly zone of the kind being sought means deploying NATO aircraft to Ukrainian airspace in order to block Russia from using its air force in support of the invasion. But as many experts have pointed out, this means NATO jets will have to shoot down Russian planes. In effect, an American-slash-NATO declaration of war on Russia. War between two superpowers that put together control 90% of the world's nuclear weapons. In other words, enforcing a no-fly zone could trigger World War III. Now, it's not as if no-fly zones haven't been used in the past by the US and its allies. The BBC, for instance, cited three instances of that. Iraq, 1991, after the first Gulf War. Bosnia, 1992, during the Balkans conflict. Libya, 2011, as part of that military intervention. But in each of those cases, the US and its partners were facing vastly inferior military forces. Not so with Russia, which is a global military superpower armed to the teeth with nuclear weaponry. All the more risky after Putin announced that he had put Russia's nuclear forces on special alert. In fact, just today, Russia's foreign minister was quoted as saying, a third world war will involve nuclear weapons. Now, governments in America and the United Kingdom are aware of this, which is why they repeatedly turned down the idea of a no-fly zone. Listen to what U.S. President Joe Biden had to say recently. But let me be clear. Our forces are not engaged and will not engage in the conflict with Russian forces in Ukraine. Our forces are not going to Europe to fight Ukraine, but to defend our NATO allies in the event that Putin decides to keep moving west. And as I've made crystal clear, the United States and our allies will defend every inch of territory that is NATO territory with the full force of our collective power. Every single inch. I'll be honest with you, as I always promised I would be. A Russian dictator of fa invading a foreign country has cost around the world. We'll defend every inch of NATO territory. Remember, Ukraine is not NATO. Boris Johnson in a press conference said, when it comes to a no-fly zone, we have to accept that it involves shooting down Russian planes and it's simply not on the agenda of any NATO country. So what are the alternatives? Well, the alternatives to no-fly zones is to pump funds and weaponry to the Ukrainian army and escalate sanctions against Russia. And while that may slow down the Russian advance, most experts agree it may be unlikely to end the invasion, which is why Ukrainians are increasingly having to take matters in their own hands as seen in this video, where hundreds of citizens can be seen blocking Russian access to one of Ukraine's key power stations by literally crowding themselves onto the roads and the highways. And also motivational videos like this one by the Ukraine government emphasizing that the National Guards together with Ukrainian citizens will defend their land.
Now, does all of this mean that the world will have to remain effectively a spectator to an increasingly bloody Russian invasion against its much smaller neighbor? For now, the difficult but inevitable answer seems to be yes. All right, joining me tonight, let me go first uh, straight away to Vladimir Aryev, who's a member of parliament from Ukraine and I believe is joining me from Kiev, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Aryev. Yes, uh, I am, and you're not mistaken. I'm from Kiev and I'm a member of parliament. Right. So just to ask you, sir, that, you know, uh, this idea, and you've just heard now that many world leaders have come out, NATO leaders have come out and said that they simply can't enforce a no-fly zone because it's essentially signaling World War III, even though we're hearing the increasingly uh, desperate appeals being made by your government and your leadership. How do you, how do you respond to this idea that, that if they do jump into the fight, it will escalate, it will become a world war? On the one hand, uh, I can understand uh, the uh, concerns of uh, NATO states uh, uh, that uh, the no-fly zone could trigger the Third World War as well as the rhetoric uh, of uh, uh, Russian President Putin that probably it seems he go nuts and uh, really he lost his mind uh, uh, with uh, his readiness to escalate the situation. So, uh, at the same time, uh, we got uh, an assurances uh, uh, from uh, NATO states, uh, some, not a, as a blog, but some NATO states, uh, with the weapon supplement. So, it means that we can uh, discuss the matters of uh, enforce Ukraine air defense, uh, and uh, this is uh, could be a good solution uh, when uh, uh, Ukrainian army, by mm. our hands, uh, our own hands, but at the same time doing our job defending our states from invasion, right. but with an uh, right and proper military aid given by uh, our friends uh, from the West world. Okay. But in the event that they don't do that, and we'll just put up on screen once again those very disturbing videos that are coming in from, from Kiev and Kharkiv and so on. In the event that that support doesn't come, the aerial support, the no-fly zone, how critical is the situation for you and for your armed forces? How close are you to feeling that the Russian, you know, there could be a takeover? First of all, I would like to stress that uh, even uh, very positive Western analytics, uh, they uh, predict uh, 96 hours maximum for res Ukrainian resistance against Russian army. So the, the strength of Russian army is uh, more mythical than real because we are resisting already seventh day and uh, the situation uh, around Kiev uh, well, not changing uh, uh, during the last two days rapidly and well, it uh, remains the same. So we are ready to resist by our uh, by our uh, present resources, but uh, it could be ongoing aggression and ongoing resistance. Mm. And th this story can um, uh, well to, can can be extended for a much more longer time than we expect and we see that russia uh, would like to raise up reserves and send uh send it to ukraine okay so this is this is the matter this is the matter of only time so if we uh, got uh, the assistance uh, uh, the aid, little, uh, the aid uh, from the well good enough aid uh, from uh, the Western world so we can resist more effectively and uh, beat the uh, Russia invasion up uh, uh, in the uh, very uh, okay fair, fair enough uh, you're saying it'll it'll help but you're also still able to fight for the moment and hold your ground uh, let me also welcome uh, ambassador Kenneth Juster he's been former United States ambassador to India Distinguished Fellow at the CFR Council for Foreign Relations, also Dr. Victor Sumsky. He's a senior expert, ASEAN Center at MGIMO University in Moscow. Uh, Ambassador Jester, great to have you on. Thank you know, you. nice to be. When when you hear of when you hear of these appeals from the Ukrainian leadership saying that look, there's going to be a bloodbath until NATO comes in, does the no-fire zone. But we heard 
Joe Biden there saying we're not going to get involved. Uh, we'll, we'll teach Putin a lesson, but we're not going to do that militarily. Is that really helping the, the sort of unfolding crisis on the ground, which, as all the images and reporting suggests, is just getting worse by the minute? Well, I think in your lead in to this discussion, you laid out very well the risks of a no fly zone because it would bring NATO forces into direct combat with Russia and that could escalate into even potentially a nuclear war. Uh, at the same time, uh, one does not want to see indiscriminate destruction in Ukraine. And so an alternative would have been simply not to stipulate that there definitely would not be a no-fly zone, to recognize that it's not something we want to do at this point. But it's not inconceivable that if the types of attacks the Russians undertake are so devastating if they use chemical weapons or nuclear tactical nuclear weapons that at some point it's possible conceivable that NATO would get involved no one wants to reach that point but I guess it might have been better although I understand the reasons for uh, making these explicit statements but to have left a certain level of uncertainty so that uh, Putin and Russia would not be so clear on the environment they'd be facing. But I agree with what you stated at the outset, that it's simply too risky to mm. have a no-fly zone that would bring uh, conflict between NATO and Russia, but that everything should be done to provide weaponry to the Ukrainians, mm. to provide intelligence, to provide humanitarian support, and to do whatever we can to prop up uh, the country. Right. That's an interesting point you make, that, that perhaps there should have been a degree of ambiguity, that at the moment it's a, it's a no to a no-fly zone, but maybe if things really get worse, then perhaps NATO might have to jump in. I just want to quickly go back for a second uh, to uh, Mr. Ariyev before I move on. Uh, Mr. Ariyev, you know, uh, short of the, of the actual bringing in of a no-fly zone, the idea of, of weapons, we've actually got a, a graphic up which summarizes some of the key uh, weapons that are being delivered by NATO to Ukraine, and of course the sanctions as well on Russia. Is that helping in any way? Well, sanctions are really helpful as well as uh, I keep in touch uh, with some uh, uh, rare normal persons in Moscow who can uh think <laughs> clearly and uh, uh to estimate uh, the situation in the in the normal way so they are saying that uh, and, and, and the course, weapons uh, and and the, also the the weapons so just to quickly summarize this is this is some of the information that's available uh you know being widely reported the united states has sent 350 million dollars of weapons which includes anti-armor small arms and anti-aircraft systems EU $500 million worth of weapons, which includes fighter jets sent by some nation, the United Kingdom light anti-armor defensive weapon systems, and lethal defensive weapons. Well, current economic sanctions, it, this is a very uh, strong uh, strike uh, against the economy and financial system of the Russian Federation. And they are paria states now uh, for in, uh, the trade markets and uh, financial in, in financial world but at the same time uh, altogether this is a complex of measures and uh, of course the uh, supplement of uh, weapon uh, it uh, help us uh, to uh, fix uh, the situation on the ground here and in the air over uh, uh, ukrainian ground okay and we are doing effectively and more uh, one uh, the more than one five thousand uh, soldiers uh, of russia already paid with their lives for invasion okay and more, russia more, will pay right. much more, more than price. okay more than five thousand you say of course uh, the the russians contest that but uh, just to bring in you uh, dr somsky uh, yes uh, dr somsky is this a, a real threat that Putin holds out, saying that, you know, if you escalate, like he said at the outset, we will teach these countries a lesson they'll never forget. Today, Foreign Minister Lavrov says World War III will be a nuclear war. Is this a sort of a bluff that's being used to preempt NATO from jumping in? Or does he actually mean it? 
in my humble opinion, the hysterical reaction of the West, what's happening in Ukraine, has reached such unusual proportions that uh, probably some people in Russia are apprehensive about them losing their mind as a result of that hysteria and doing something really, really silly. And that's why Putin made this warning that uh, forces of strategic containment of Russia are put, in, uh, are put on the alert. By the way, forces of strategic containment are not just nuclear forces. Uh, this, is, uh, this is referring to the whole defense potential of the country. That's it. And, 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 and I, do not, I, I do not think anything... Anybody hinted here the possibility of a nuclear war? Although, I mean, uh, knowing the mindset of professional military, hmm. uh, I think uh, anybody would guess that they should consider every possible, uh, every, no, every, but when every you say possibility. Nobody Even is considering, <laughs> when you say nobody is considering nuclear war, it was Putin who, who said, did he not, that he's put his nuclear forces on alert? <laughs> And then you had Foreign Minister no, Lavrov I, saying that I, World War Three will be a nuclear war. I mean, <laughs> well, uh, since uh, uh, right next to them is such a personality, such a flamboyant personality as Zelensky, who has been living for a long time in the world of his personal dreams, and who has probably uh, who is probably even now enjoying the role of being the uh, tail who is wagging the American dog. I mean, he, he actually tries to talk Americans into something that President Biden said explicitly he wouldn't do. And, no, and this when is you a say, sign <laughs> of... Uh, complete... but, but when you say yeah. he's trying to wag the... I mean, he, you are... The, Russia is invading his country as we speak. Uh, you know, bombs are falling on key Russian cities. This, was not, this is not some kind of attempt to just annex the East or, or to create sovereign enclaves in the East. This is a full-scale invasion well, on Ukraine, uh, uh, including civilian areas, are being okay, hit repeatedly. Uh, okay. Uh, it, I mean, an Indian student was killed yesterday. This is something that so came to us right out of the blue and, and absolutely... May I speak? May I speak, okay? Uh, I, I understand your message, and, but I just want to bring mine. And my message is very simple. You know, uh, people are in your studio and in many other studios around the world are talking now as if this came to us absolutely unexpectedly. Russia was trying to practice diplomacy as far okay. as its security concerns vis-a-vis -vis the West were concerned for many, many years, at least since 2007 and right. more actively since 2014. Right. Uh, just, uh, just, okay, so months, diplomacy... just two months ago, the West was pre the West was presented with with two draft treaties on getting okay, to let's, the situation let's... of strategic getting back. Okay, so you're all saying... sorts of warnings were given. Okay, what else, what else do you want? Okay, what else does one want? Well, hopefully, one wants not this <laughs> but uh, but let well, me just also okay let me come back uh, to you but, but, i'll come but, back to you i'll come back to you dr samsky i will come back to you um, but i also want to just go across because i've spoken yeah. earlier let me just come back to you i also spoken earlier to lesia vasilenko she's another ukrainian member of parliament and i began by asking her the same question that i put to mr ariev that you are asking for a no fly zone but the western world largely seems reluctant it's not just the NATO countries that can provide us with a no-fly zone. This request our president makes, it's a request to all countries of the world who can help us establish a no-fly zone over Ukraine, over its capital Kiev, over Kharkiv, where an Indian student was killed just yesterday in a, a shell fire uh, fired by Russian missiles, and a no-fly zone over uh, nuclear power stations that are located all across Ukraine. Uh, if Russian missiles which are known to be not very uh, direct towards uh, military targets and liking to hit uh, civilian targets and to also civilian infrastructure. Hit one of those nuclear power stations or Chernobyl, the world will be in a state of nuclear disaster. Disaster which will affect every single citizen and human being on the planet. So when Ukrainians call for a no-fly zone over Ukraine, it's not just to the NATO allies we appeal. 
We also appeal to India. We also appeal to China. We also appeal to all the smaller states out there who have uh, aviation forces and who can send us in to protect our skies and to hold up the Ukrainian sky against the mm -hmm. biggest aggression the world has ever seen in right. the 21st century and not just in the 21st century, just so, in history. So, but when the NATO leadership says that this could start a third world war, World War Three, to that you would say what? Have no illusion. The World War Three has already started and it started back in uh, 24th of February 2022, when Russia escalated its aggression towards Ukraine. At that point, all other countries were pulled in with sanctions against the President Vladimir Putin, all his cronies, and all of his country. And it is then that the Russian defense and security strategy got changed. And the names of all these countries were added to the list of enemy number one. So if Putin wants to attack them, he already has reason enough. And it would not be declaring a war on Russia by NATO countries or any other countries. Russia has already declared a war on the whole world by attacking Ukraine, by attacking civilians, by breaking every rule in the humanitarian law book and every rule of international law. And the number of crimes, war crimes and crimes mm. against humanity just keep growing as the missiles hit residential blocks of flat densely populated areas as their missiles hit maternity wards and hospitals as thousands of Ukrainian children okay. are forced to flee across the borders, hundreds of thousands, saying goodbye to their parents, maybe for the last time. Okay, but if this intervention doesn't happen, if there's no no-fly zone, then what? Yes, there will be devastation, and after that, there will come consequences. Consequences for the Russians, their people, and their country, who are now supporting their power-crazed leader in his invasion of Ukraine. And these consequences come after every single war. It is the Russians who will be paying for the restoration and the rebuilding of Ukraine out of their own pocket. So that is something that the world has to look forward to, but trust me. Ukraine and Ukrainians will keep standing until mm -hmm. the very end. And it's up to you now, all of the international global community, regardless of whether it's NATO or EU, to come in and help an independent country survive. To right. come in and help keep the world security and defense framework as you know it today. Because if Russia prevails, if Russia is allowed to prevail on this one, they will not stop. They will continue going at it grabbing territory by territory, country by country, tearing Europe apart, mm -hmm. and with that, also making claims to other territories across the world. Okay. Russia is the most dangerous country run by a psychotic leader, and it must be stopped now in the interest of humanity. Right. Last question. When you say that, you know, you are all standing and fighting, uh, despite this, this worsening situation, and as you say, there's no likelihood that the cavalry could be coming, uh, you have chosen to stay on in Ukraine? I am here in Ukraine and uh, I will remain here until the end of this war. I will continue fighting with my people on all the fronts that I can fight on. My children are now in safety. My parents are now in safety. I have nothing to worry about here apart from the people of Ukraine and Ukraine his army and Ukraine's ability to keep standing. Okay. This is my work that I do day to day and that carries me through these difficult days of war. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, do stay safe. Uh, let me just get uh, Ambassador Juster to respond to two quick points, Ambassador Juster. One was, of course, the point that we just heard Lesia Vasilenko made that in a way World War Three has already begun uh, Putin's uh, aggression encompasses more than just Ukraine. And the other point Dr. Sumsky made that in a way, you can't just make Russia the bad guy. It was Western diplomacy that also failed. Well, let me respond to both of those points. Uh, first, I would disagree with my Russian colleague. Uh, the Russians, the United States, and others signed a memorandum in Budapest in 1994 in which Ukraine traded its nuclear weapons for guarantees of peace for its territorial integrity and sovereignty 
and for its ability to make decisions as a sovereign nation. It has chosen, as have other countries, to move west. NATO didn't choose to move east. These countries chose to move west. But it has not been admitted to NATO, and that was not going to happen anytime soon. Now, even if one has a different perspective uh, from the point of view of Russia, there is absolutely no excuse whatsoever for an unprovoked attack on a country that was not threatening Russia in any way. Mm -hmm. And the discriminant uh, damage to the country, to the killing of civilians, to the threats okay. to use nuclear weapons are inappropriate. Right. I very much sympathize with my colleagues from Ukraine. And that's why I said, I think at this point, to have a no-fly zone or to have NATO get directly involved risks a nuclear war. Right. And that is why there's been great caution. But I also said I it would probably not have given absolute assurances that there would never be any action depending on the level of atrocities we see okay. by the Russians. Something may be mandated. Okay. Fair enough. Well, let's see how it plays out, but it is looking extremely worrying. Thank you all so much for joining me on the show and thank you for watching. We're out of time. Good night.